This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. We're in Liverpool. It's fight week. Callum Smith defends WBA ring magazine titles against John Ryder. With me, Eddie Hearn. Eddie, big bill Saturday. Not only the world title fight on there. Four fights up. You can't definitively pick a winner either. Talk to me about this card. Yeah, I think, um, you know, looking at the card firstly, no sort of standout superstars. Fowler might get the ump with me for saying that. But all 50-50 fights on the undercard. And even the main event, I think he's a lot closer than what, you know, people might think. A lot of people looking at who's next for Callum Smith, you know, who's the Anfield opponent going to be. Firstly, we have a domestic world championship fight between Callum Smith and the mandatory challenger, John Ryder, who's on a really, really good knockout streak right now and full of confidence. Oh, the undercard, Fowler against Harry Scarf, he's a great fight, really interesting. I see Clifton Mitchell over there, they're right up for it. You know, he sold a lot of tickets from Derby. They think they can beat Anthony Fowler. James Tennyson against Craig Evans is a great fight as well. I think Tennyson's severely underrated. And I think coming up to lightweight as well, where sometimes at Super Feather, he showed a few frailties around the body because he was so tight at the weight. And if he can lose those, he's going to be a nightmare for anybody at 135 pounds. Um, then you've got Masha Dodd uh, against Tom Farrell, Liverpool against Birkenhead again. You know, a big must-win fight for both those guys. For me, the undercard fight I'm most looking forward to is Craig Glover against Chris Billum smith Commonwealth Cruiserweight Championship. Two guys that really must win, but they kind of found themselves in a position where they'll probably be chief support on Saturday. And the winner goes off to be in some big fights with, you know, Reactpour, with Tommy McCarthy, with Akoli. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that fight. So, great card. Really good card. Starting at 6 o'clock with uh, Tennyson against Craig Evans on Facebook and then going in. Sure. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Sean Masher Dodd, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, yeah, looking forward to it. Second, that's some great fights on there. Uh, speaking to Glover and Billum Smith yesterday, for what it's worth, and they're both super up for it. Yeah. Looking forward to that fight. Going back to the main event, though, uh, you mentioned it. We, we in the media, everyone in the boxing world, seems to be talking about if, when Callum Smith wins, then we'll yeah. speak about Canelo, whatever. Yeah. That said, how important is it that he doesn't get complacent? We've seen it before with fighters where they've been thinking about what's next. We'll just get this one out of the way and it all goes wrong. How important is it that he gives John Ryder his full respect that, doesn't it? I think he will. I think he knows he's boxing. I think he rates John Ryder. And I think him and Joe Gallagher know this is a proper fight. You've got to think about John Ryder. You know, he's, it's a lifelong dream of his to become world champion. He's one fight away from doing it. You know, he's just come up the M1 and M6 with Tony Sims and a lot of people coming from London as well. Massive opportunity for him. You know, Callum is the favourite. He's an exceptional fighter. But, you know, like you say, everyone's talking about what's next. And you've seen with AJ Ruiz. You've seen, I think, maybe even with Wilder Ortiz this Saturday where it's the motivation you know, like how much does John Ryder want to win this fight? How much does Luis Ortiz want to win that fight? How much did Andy Ruiz want to win that fight? The answer is a fucking lot, you know? And you've got to be up for this. And, and that's my worry with Wilder on Saturday, for example. But I think Callum's a, a good enough pro to realise this is a serious fight. Is Ed Sheeran coming on Saturday? Who? Ed Sheeran? Oh, mate, I'm just so glad I never asked for a selfie. Moving away, uh, Deontay Wilder brought him up. He's on Sky Sports this Saturday against Luis Ortiz. You mentioned there that you, you worry there could be a little bit of maybe taking the out ball, a bit of complacency. First yeah. fight was a cracker, conclusive knockout, yeah. but repeat or revenge in your eyes? I just think that, again, not being a hater, but the show hasn't gone like they wanted it to go in terms of sales and stuff like that. And Wilder, for me, at the presser, didn't really look like he wanted to be there. I mean, you know, he's a great talker. Great entertainer. Did you hear his chat? It was awful. It was like, get your popcorn and your pizzas and put the phone in your pocket. And, and I don't think he really wants to fight Luis Ortiz. And, and I do see shades of maybe Joshua Ruiz where it's like, like, I just want to go straight into the Fury fight or I want Wilder, you know. And that's dangerous when you're fighting a hungry challenger in Luis Ortiz. So I do still think that Wilder wins, but it wouldn't surprise me if Luis Ortiz, who used to look 70 and now looks 48, uh, might just pull something out of the bag and I'm looking forward to watching it live on Sky Sports. Last time you and I saw each other, Eddie was out in Los Angeles, KSI, Logan Paul. Uh, we've seen the reports apparently did more buys and Joshua Ruiz, obviously cheaper, uh, a different market, but overall your reflections on that week, chaotic, but success? Just incredible. I mean, uh, still looking at the numbers coming in. I mean, you know, not just from Sky and from The Zone, from our Fight TV, but from you guys, you know, not just Boxing Social, but all the other out outlets as well just mind-blowing numbers and um, everybody involved wants more you know um, maybe not the hardcore fans but everybody that was involved from the broadcasters to the fans watching that want to see more we just got to be careful that we don't flood the market and by flooding I mean three or four a year that's too many I think this is a one-off annual event 
where we get to see stuff like that. But it can only be with people that can fight a little bit, that respect the code, that train hard, get themselves in good shapes and the right matchups. Those two are just perfect together. You may never get a better situation where you've got the two biggest YouTubers in the world, America, Britain, you know, wanting to fight each other. So you may never see something like that again, or you may see a crossover and a YouTuber against a footballer. But we don't want to make this a, a circus. And there were shades of circus in that event, but it really worked, really worked. And uh, I think you'll likely see one again. And I know for a fact there are other networks out there, particularly in America right now, that are looking at it as well. So, you know, at first it was this crazy idea. Now, as always, everyone wants to copy suit. You mentioned other networks, just to touch on something that came out via the PBC. Uh, we knew it was something they were talking about anyway when it first got going. It looks like they're planning on introducing their own belt. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think they've been looking to do it for a long time. I mean, yeah, we get that question as well. Are you going to introduce your own belt? Um, are uh, you going you gonna to introduce your own belt? Is the PBC going to do it? Is Top Rank going to do it? The truth is, I think, from a promoter's point of view, you would quite like... I guess, or they would like some of the issues with the sanctioning bodies to not be a problem for their business. But you can't ignore the history and the credibility of those governing bodies and what it means to a fighter. Like fighters want to win the Ring Magazine belt, the WBA, the WBC. They don't want to win a Matchroom World Championship. They don't want to win a PVC World Championship. Over history, maybe those belts can become something. And you've got to start somewhere. It's like with the UFC. But I don't know. I'm not... I think PBC have looked at that. I, I knew they looked at it when they launched. What was that four years ago, five years ago? It's difficult to do, but it wouldn't surprise me. Dillian White, um, rumours are rife that he will be on the Joshua card. I know he puts something on Instagram as well. We're expecting an announcement on that. Can you tell us any more opponents when we can expect the announcement as well? Yeah, I think, you, uh, I think you'll get that fight uh, December 7th. I think he'll fight in Saudi Arabia. Finalising that at the moment. Um, and I think that will happen in the next sort of 48 hours. A few people on social media suggesting it could be Charles Martin. Is that a possibility? No, I'd like that. I'd quite like that fight, but it won't be Charles Martin. Moving away, um, speaking of Joshua Ruiz, he had his open day yesterday. A lot of criticism uh, in the last sort of week or so as to the fact the pay-per-view for Joshua Ruiz 2 will be £25, uh, up from £20, a 25% increase. Could you just clarify your stance on that and your thoughts on it? Uh, it wasn't my decision. Um, I understand it. It's the biggest fight of the century. It's one of the biggest heavyweight fights of all time. It's not a reflection of the future of pay-per-view. I think this is a one-off fight where you may never see a fight like this again. So that was a decision they made. They always control the price point, Sky. Sometimes they consult with me. Sometimes I'm told what it is. The last one was 9.99. You know, uh, the one before that was 19.99. This is 24.99. So I uh, don't know what else to tell you other than it's, it's a freak event that is one of the biggest heavyweight fights of all time. I know, like you say, it's not your decision, but from what you said there, does that suggest that that won't be perhaps a set price from now on, that we won't be paying £25 for every event? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That's another one of my contacts, though, is it? <laughs> it's, uh, I think you will not see 2495 again for some time. I think there is a, you know, and although people think I own Sky and DAZN, um, I can't speak on their behalf about long-term pricing strategies on pay-per-view, but from everything I understand, 1995 is the price point. But this is one of the biggest heavyweight fights of all time, and 24.95 is the price point here. 9.99 worked well with KSI Logan Paul, you know. So who knows? I think I think you've got to be flexible in this situation. Uh, moving elsewhere, Jacobs Chavez uh, been a lot of talk, sort of with regard to what's not only going on with VADA, but uh, regarding locations as well. Let's start with the VADA stuff, though. Uh, it came out online that VADA tester would not be in place for this fight. You put out a tweet saying that that was not our decision. That was the decision of VADA after uh, Ch Chavez refused the test. Can you just clarify the situation with regards to VADA and what testing you will have in place? Sure, I was very disappointed with VADA, and I'm a bit disappointed with the Nevada Commission, and I'm a little bit disappointed with Chavez. Uh, he's not our fighter, so I can't talk on his behalf. But what I can tell you is... We uh, were in discussions with Nevada about staging that fight on December 20th. We were in negotiations with Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who hadn't signed off on the, the fight, who hadn't yet signed his VADA forms. Next thing, VADA turned up to test him. And he said, I haven't signed my VADA forms. So he didn't test. They also turned up to test Danny Jacobs. Danny Jacobs was actually in New York. He weren't in uh, Atlanta. And then Nevada decided to suspend him, which... You know, he doesn't have a license to suspend. He's not American. 
Um, and then the other states that we were looking at for the fight, which were Texas and uh, Phoenix, we spoke to the ABC. We said, you know, you advise us. Are we able to speak to these states to hold the fight? Yes. Went to uh, Arizona. They said, no problem. You know, he's missed a test, but as long as he uh, signs up for VADA testing and as long as he don't miss another test and gets tested straight away, no problem. Uh, we'll stage the fight. So we went ahead December 20th in Phoenix. We then signed all the VADA paperwork, Jacobs did, and so did Chavez. We sent them to VADA, I think the 5th or 6th of November. Margaret Goodman turned around and said, no, I'm not going to test Chavez because I think it'll upset the, the, the Nevada Commission. I said, well, you can't do that. You're an independent testing agency. No, sorry. Uh, so I said, what, are you going to test Jarrell Miller? Or are you going to test other people that have blatantly failed tests? The answer is yes, you will. So we then spoke to the Arizona Commission who asked us to use drug-free sport, who test for the NBA, the NFL, and they did that. They started that a couple of days after that process. So there was a hearing yesterday where they basically delayed the hearing till December the 18th. Spoke again to the uh, Arizona Commission, who are saying, no problem, December 20, fight's on. And hopefully we can sort it out with Bob, because Bob Bennett's not happy. Sent me a letter saying we may not extend your license in March. I said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, Bob? You know, if you don't want me to promote events in Las Vegas, no problem. But I'm hoping that you know, everybody can be happy and we can just think about this sensibly. And um, yeah, but in terms of the fight, no, no change. Uh, one fight I wanted to ask you about, and two fighters in particular I want to ask you out before I let you go. Appreciate you about to start the press conference. This past weekend, a weekend off of sorts for you, but we had Lee McGregor, Cash Farouk uh, up in Scotland, both, as far as I'm aware, promotional free agents. Are those guys guys that you're looking at potentially? Yeah, I watched the fight. I thought it was a really good fight. Uh, I'd, I'd had a few beers, uh, and I, I can't, you know, I think the general feeling was Cash Farouk won the fight, but very, very close fight. I'd love to work with both guys, love to do the rematch. And uh, yeah, really, really impressed. Great show by MTK. Good crowd, good energy. And uh, I'd like to see it again. All right, Eddie, as I mentioned, I think we're about to get going quite soon. So I'll let you go. Thank you for speaking to Bucket Social. Cheers,